Okay, so uh, a while ago I posted a photo of a broken um, shadow. It was cracking and pulling away from the pan and I showed that it was fixed and I got a few questions on how I fixed it. The method that I use uh, was told to me by Davina. Um, now I'm, I don't claim to be an expert at all. It's just I break a lot of makeup, so I have to fix a lot of makeup. I cannot afford to replace everything that I break. That's just not a reality in this household, not with me. So um, I've gotten fairly adept at pressing. Um, when you press wet, you want you run the risk of uh, you have to let it sit and set up and dry after you press it, and then you have to see if it's pulling away, if it's the pressure's right, blah blah blah. You have a direct feedback, um, like you know right away when you press dry if it's good or not, if it's uh, too hard or you did it unevenly, like you piled up too much in the middle and then you went to press, so it was kind of hard in the middle, you couldn't really get much, and then on the edges it's all uh, too soft. Um, so that's the reason why I prefer dry. It's, it's quicker feedback. So that's what I'm gonna show you, um, at least the way that I'm doing it. A uh, few things first, um, I'm wearing gloves, just because I don't want to mess up my uh, manicure. Also, in between on this hand, it's all filed, and I don't want pigments getting stuck in there. Um, if you are concerned about cleanliness of your shadows, or there's any possibility that you're going to pass this shadow on or share it with someone else, um, instead of you know getting your fingies up all in it, maybe pop on some gloves. Uh, for pressing, before we get into powder and whatever, um, there's some prep work that needs to uh, take place, which for me that honestly takes more time than the actual, actual pressing if I'm just sitting there pressing stuff. Uh, if your shadow is, bro is broken or you're trying to rehome a shadow from like a larger pan or maybe it's just pressed too hard, so you're going to stab it out and stick it in something else. Um, having something to scrape or pry is good. This is just an old uh, brush with a flat end. You could actually get a little makeup spatula. Um, obviously having a container or a pan to press the product into. Um, a pressing tile. I'm using a quarter. This has been cleaned. Um, TKB sells uh, pressing tiles at various sizes to go with their pans. Speaking of pans, um, magnetic ones are tin. They are also prone to um, like rusting. Uh, so don't like just leave these in isopropyl alcohol because the dilution is with water. Um, you can also use uh, aluminum ones, but they're not magnetized. They're not like. They're not a rust monster, um, so you, you gotta put like a magnetized sticker on there. Um, a container to put your broken powder into. This is my mortar and pestle. Um, I think these are needed when you're pressing dry, but you can put it in like a plastic bag and make sure you finally grind the crap out of it because any uh, difference in texture is going to be apparent when you're doing it dry. Wet, it's not as big of a problem because you're creating like a, a putty, or I guess not a putty, but uh, you're mixing it with alcohol and it breaks down. Um, having some isopropyl alcohol on hand just for any cleanup, things like that is good. We're not adding it to the shadow. Um, completely dry, not uh, adding any liquid that's important. Um, also having something like appropriate for the amount of shadow or powder that you have that you can scoop into the container. So these are somewhat comparable in size. Okay, so whoops, that kind of housekeeping out of the way. Um, oh, well, one last thing. Um, some type of cling film or plastic baggie 
I'm just using a thin plastic baggie since it's easier to manage, especially in this kind of uh, setup. Okay, so this is a shadow that I stabbed out of a palette. It was really hard pressed in there. I love the color, but I, I just can't get any powder on my brush. It's just like a rock. So I have my mortar and pestle. Now this is why I think this is kind of needed because this is specifically designed to, you know, grind up things into a fine homogeneous consistency. So that's what I'm going to do. This is really hard. I might have to cut and come back. Okay. So it doesn't take too long this way either. You don't need a big one. If you're using um, like a small one like I am and you're doing larger shadows, you might have to uh, break it up a little bit and then in a separate container, put some of that in there and then just grind up small bits and then bring it all together and try to grind it. Because otherwise, if you overfill it, it's um, cumbersome. It's a nightmare. But just one like standard 26 millimeter eyeshadow is fine. 36 millimeter, you're asking a lot. Okay, so we're at a pretty good consistency already. It doesn't take up too much time. And just move it around, see if there's any big bits that didn't get um, crushed up. All right, we're looking good. I'm going to pat that off. Oh, right. Um, I have paper right here. Um, I find just like computer paper to be a, a good catch for when you are filling your shadow because if you uh, miss or spill, you can pick it up and the shadow doesn't really stick to it and so then you can just like pour it right back into the the pan or whatever you're working with so now I'm just because it's all stuck up on the sides because it comes up on the side and falls back in as you're rotating so now I'm just scraping it sorry if that sound is awful so I'm just bringing it all together that way I can make it scoopable so then I get a scoop. Oh, I get a scoop. I lightly, carefully pour it into the pan. I'm going to set this off to the side. Okay, see how I already spilled? We'll see if I feel like saving that because this was so hard pressed that there might be excess afterwards. Okay, now I don't know if you can see this, but it's all mounded up and it's not on the edges. So something you want to pay close attention to is uh, getting almost like you're making a well, but push the product over to the edges. Okay, so now we've moved it more to the edges and it's not as uh, like piled up in the center because when you press, that's where all the uh, product is, is in the center. And then the edges are left uh, really soft and it's just uneven and that's not a good thing. Okay, so now I'm just doing like a light press with my finger, focusing on those edges. On a smaller eyeshadow like this, you probably won't have to go in and do like a, like with a pressing tile and do like a, a moderate amount of pressure to do like a press. I'm going to do it anyways, but definitely with a larger uh, shadow, you got to do that. Or I find with the way that it happens for me. Okay, so I put the plastic bag over the pressing tile that I'm using, which is a quarter does not come in direct contact with the powder. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it in there. This is not going to be the final press because I still have to fill it more, but I'm going to focus again on the edges for this particular round, I guess, round one. And the quarter is smaller, so you're going to have to, than this particular, ah, than this particular pan, um, 
So you might have to like slide it all the way to the edge and then press and slide it all the way to the edge and then press. Okay. So that's where we're sitting at right now. You can see that there it's a bit uneven. It's not fully filled, but we'll get there. Let's put that guy back down. Scrape some more. You don't have to have like super big scoops as you're filling. Uh, you don't want super scant scoops either, especially on your uh, final press, because then it will be uh, uneven, or um, if there wasn't enough in one spot, it might look like there's uh, holes, kind of like you have a pothole in your shadow. And this doesn't take as long um, when you're just sitting there doing it versus uh, talking about it. So again, you had that mound and you want to push things to the edges and do like a light press with your finger and you can feel like where there's more and less I might grab a little bit more and stick it on this one side I will say, um, I have more control and dexterity when I'm just using my fingers versus a glove, but things get stuck under your nails, um, you sweat, things like that. Oh, okay. So I'm just doing, this isn't a lot of pressure I'm doing yet. This seems fairly even. Uh, I'm going to fill it up a little bit more. Let's see, right here. Okay, I'm going to go in for the final press. Now, this is when you do got to press kind of hard, objectively hard. So I'm putting this guy in, and it's more or less the same, but there's a, a slight difference that you're doing. So go after those edges again. I'm going to rotate and then keep doing that. And my pressure is fairly hard, but not quite hard yet. I'm just really focusing on getting the product up to those edges. So, I don't know if you can see, but the quarter can move around. So, get it up to the edge and press. Get it up to an edge and press. Okay, so now you really want to put some pressure on it, and I'm going to focus on the center. So I'm going to stick it onto where I can bear a good bit of weight on the heel of my hand, and then uh, where I can bear a lot of weight on my thumb, which for me is like right here, where my thumb bends. Okay, get it on the center. And press. And then rotate it and press because I'm trying to get as even pressure as possible. Obviously, it's going to be uneven, but okay. So here we go. I think it looks pretty good. And so now you can like swatch it and see is this okay? And because it's dry, you don't have to wait for it to set up. You know exactly, if, like right now, if it's okay or not. And if it's uneven, if it's too hard, you can um, grind it up again and try again. 
Let's see. Okay, see, that's a lot better. I was getting nothing. Absolutely nothing before. Oh, I made a little mess. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're, we're a lot better. Okay, well, and that's it. All done.